All right, this is going to be a flash illustration lesson, mostly focused on shading and uh, primarily, actually, shading a car, which I know is always a popular subject. So go ahead and get into your shading part one folder. Hopefully this will just be a two-parter. And uh, the example files are only going to open up on Flash 8 or a version higher than that. Okay, so if you have Flash 7, ooh, I'm sorry, it's just not going to open up for you. That would be uh, Flash MX2004. That's the alternate name for that one. So dive on into here and grab open your start file. Okay, now the deal here is that I uh, tend to hide things into the library that we'll use later. So that's uh, one good reason to use a start file. Also, too, there are some preferences that have already been set up. One big one that I'm going to mention is uh, the object drawing is turned off. Okay, and uh, it's always like that for all my lessons. But if it was turned on, it would look like that. Just kind of depressed in there. Okay, so you just want to make sure that uh, is definitely off. Okay. Otherwise, uh, I think we are ready to go. What we'll do is uh, just do a real quick uh, lesson in uh, just making a uh, three-dimensional looking ball, and then after that we'll move on and uh, just work on that particular car. So if you feel like you kind of already know the basics of uh, drawing in Flash, if you've taken some of my other lessons, you could probably just go ahead and skip towards the, the, the car part. So you know, fast forward, and you know, as soon as you see me not working on a 3D ball, then uh, you could start it back up, but otherwise, let's begin. And uh, before we even put a uh, circle down here, let's go ahead and kind of set up the uh, stage presence a little bit. We're, right now, obviously, we just have a uh, flat black background. What we can do is grab this square over here, and let's change this to being a gradient. All right, so just uh, holding down the paint bucket tool. See that little swatch right there? If you just hold that guy down, you can then navigate down to uh, your gradients. This is a linear gradient as opposed to a radial one over this way. Just select that guy. And uh, we don't need a stroke or a line around this uh, square when we put it on here. So we'll just uh, take that off by going over here to that kind of crossed out icon. And uh, just draw a box on the stage. We will adjust the placement of that gradient by doing this. We'll go over here to our uh, gradient transform tool in past versions of Flash and previous ones. Uh, this is uh, just kind of a floating box of its own. Right now, it's uh, sharing space with the free transform tool. So just gonna you know pull down like that. And uh, a hotkey for this is just hitting F, by the way. So if I now select this object, you can see I've got these handles over here. So one of the ones I'm gonna do is uh, just rotate this guy. And let's see. Kind of squish it down some. If you need to pause the video and just play around with uh, that, feel free. But uh, basically, I'm just uh, adjusting how much of the uh, the color is spread over uh, the object. Now it's uh, kind of tightened in a bit. See the uh, full black is there, full white, and you know it shows up about that way. And let's select it again, and then go over here to our color window, which is actually already open. So I'm gonna not actually select that. There it is. And with this uh, shape still selected, I'm just going to click down on this white swatch. And actually, if I hold down on that and then let go, it should give me the option to change that to blue. All right. And what we'll do is we'll put our circle right there, put a nice little shadow over there. Again, it should just kind of set up a little bit of presence for this instead of just uh, having it on a flat background. But one thing I want to do is be sure that I don't actually draw onto uh, this particular shape that I've already created. I could, uh, could well, actually I will go ahead and create a, a new layer over this way to draw on. So we'll just say insert layer right there. And we'll just call this ball. One thing I like to do though is if I do have a shape that I've already created and I don't want to mess around with it, I'll select it and then go over here to convert to symbol. And we'll just call this, uh, how about blue floor? There we go. This will end up going into the library. So if I had to go over here to library, you would find some of the other things I've already stashed into this file. But uh, up here at the top would be blue floor. And my library is kind of big right now. Let me squeeze that in. There it is. And if I needed to, I could drag out another copy of it. And that's just kind of one of the things Flash does with those uh, movie clips. But uh, we'll leave this guy alone. In fact, we could even lock up this layer now so I don't even have a chance of uh, selecting it. And working up here now, let's go ahead and grab the oval tool. And uh, this actually shares space with the uh, rectangle tool as well. So we'll go ahead and grab that. And switch this to being black. And again, we don't need a stroke around this guy. 
one of the many things we'll learn in this lesson is that uh, objects in real life rarely uh, have lines around them. It's kind of one of those things you learn in uh, you know kindergarten when you're coloring in books that everything seems to have a line around it, but uh, not really the case. Okay, so I've created this uh, circle. It's uh, kind of big. Let me do this. I'm going to go over here to my uh, free transform tool and then just select it. And you can see I've got handles. I'm just going to squish it down a little bit. There we go. And you can do all sorts of things with these. Expand it, you know, make it taller, things like that. Feel free to play around in your own time. And uh, I'm just going to put this right over here. Yeah, there we go. Now, flat black, that's not going to work for uh, adding some dimension. So let's go and uh, put a gradient onto this. So I'm going to go over here to the paint bucket tool. Let's select this uh, radial gradient and I'm just going to click on it right there. Already that's given it a little bit of dimension. We'll make uh, things a bit more challenging though and get back over here to our color swatches. Let's select it and let's make that white black. Okay, so it should be all black now. But what we'll do is we'll drag this swatch over to here. Okay, and then on this swatch, all right, at the very end, we're going to set this to being a uh, blue that should look like it's going to reflect off of the ground underneath here. Okay. Uh, so it's going to kind of look like a, um, a reflective surface, hopefully. And uh, let's do this. Let me select this again. I, I think this blue is a little bit too bright, though. So let's move that down. And now let's get back over here to our gradient transform tool. Select this. And uh, we've got a few more options now as opposed to uh, the uh, gradient transform tool, just the linear gradient. You can see that we can uh, make this thing bigger. We can kind of rotate this guy around. And uh, what we'll do is make this uh, kind of the cone of this gradient about the same size as the circle itself. Okay, so let's see how it's like that. That would be exactly the same size as the circle. We'll uh, just move this guy up here. Let me make it maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, so you can see the black part just kind of trails off up here at the very top. So we've got a, you know, that blue just kind of hanging around the edges here. What I'm going to do now is uh, select the shape again, and uh, an option you have with these gradients is uh, the overflow. All right, so right now, the overflow on this is kind of right down in this little area where that uh, where the gradient cone is uh, just kind of cutting right across through the shape there. Okay, so if I set the overflow to uh, reflective, or actually, yeah, reflect. What it will do is it'll start to take some of this black again over here and just kind of mirror it down here at the bottom. All right, we might not even notice it. Let's see though. Come over here too. This would be the reflect one. And yeah, you can tell there's a little bit of that black starting to creep in at the very end. And uh, this is where I'm going to be kind of a perfectionist. I'm going to try to get this uh, just right. If I move now this swatch in a little bit, I should start to see just a bit more of that black. And I'm going to go back over here to my gradient transform tool. Let's see if I squeeze it in just a little bit. Uh, yeah, it looks good. I think what I'll do is uh, select the shape again and then just make this swatch just a tad darker. Okay. I think that's what I'm going for. All right, what I'm going to do is select the circle, go over here to convert to symbol. F8 is a nice little hotkey for that. So we just hit F8. We'll call this ball. And of course, we can go back and change things uh, at any time. All right, so if we figure out later, oh, let's change the gradient. You might try to do this. You might try to go and grab your gradient transform tool again, and then, uh oh, what's going on? I can't really select this guy. You need to first go over here to this arrow and then double click inside of the symbol now and then you can go and make your uh, changes again and by the way that would of course change the ball in the library as well another uh, kind of unique thing with flash is that if I had more than one of these same symbols on the stage so if I had two of these same balls okay like that and I went in and I uh, made a change to one it's going to make that change to another one so like for example if I just had this arrow tool and just selected this top part and then hit backspace to delete it off it's going to do that same thing to both of them. Okay, so we don't need two for now, though. Let's get that guy off there. And let's do this. Let's grab another circle. And what we'll do is uh, make this just 
to full black and I'm going to draw right onto the stage just to kind of squished out or stretched out circle like this. This will obviously be our drop shadow. Uh, let's use the free transform tool over here to adjust this slightly. In real life that drop shadow wouldn't be so big. There we go. And we got a few options here. We could leave this as a full black now and then uh, change the alpha property on the uh, object after we make it into a movie clip. Or what we could do, select it and then go over here and take the alpha down now. Okay, so you can see at about 40%, should look a little bit more like an actual drop shadow. Uh, I'm going to undo that and then I'll just do it the alternate way as well. So I'm going to grab this and uh, convert it to a symbol. All right, we'll call this uh, a ball shadow. And as soon as you do that, you might notice that it uh, kind of jumps up the hierarchy here of uh, how these objects are placed on this uh, particular layer. That's just something that happens when uh, you create a new symbol. It becomes the topmost object uh, of anything that is sharing its same layer. Okay, so if I go now to modify, transform, no, I'm sorry, arrange, there we go, send it back. It will put it now back behind that uh, ball like it should be. And uh, let's do this. Let's go over here to our, within our properties window, color, alpha, and we'll take this down. There we go. I find this a little bit easier sometimes uh, versus going and changing the actual color itself. Just mess around with the alpha. You got a nice little slider. You can see kind of more in real time what's going on with it. And now let's go over here to uh, filters. And we're going to add a filter onto this. This will be a blur. And we're going to make this a little bit more blurry on the x-axis versus the y. And if uh, you need help figuring out how that looks, let's see. If I were to take this back down and then mess around with the y, this wouldn't be as realistic of a shadow. Okay. We can do a little blurring on the y, but really I think this is going to occur more on the uh, x-axis. And now when I did that, it, I think... I need to play around with the alpha again. So an easier way to do that is just to go back over here, take that back up some, and let's move the actual placement as well, the shape. Uh, we'll go back over here to our blurring. Okay. Uh, you know what? Yeah, a little bit darker. Okay. Now, to really give this a kind of a reflective looking surface or a glassy uh, look to it, I'm going to uh, put a big old highlight on here. And uh, for right now, let's just go ahead and create another layer. So I'm just going to go to Insert Layer. Above this guy, we'll uh, give it a layer name of Gleam. You don't have to give your layers a name, but uh, I think it's helpful, helpful for you guys, of course. And let's go ahead and create another circle. So I'm going to grab this guy. This time we will make this just a full white. And be sure you are drawing over here. If you want to lock that layer below it, go for it. And I'm going to hold down the shift key to make a nice little perfect circle here. And what I want to do is be able to see just a little bit of black up here at the top. And then uh, have a circle about, uh, yeah, this looks correct size-wise. Maybe stretch it out just a little bit. There we go. Okay. I'm going to, with the uh, black arrow here, just select about this much of the circle. It's kind of the bottom half. Delete it out. And then I'm going to, again, still with that arrow, you can see if I would just roll over my mouse to the edge, uh, that line that's going straight across there, I can bend this guy. And you might see a little arc next to my arrow. That just means that oh, it's bendable. So let's go ahead and do that. And... Now what I'm going to do is just kind of squeeze this guy in just slightly. Let's see. Might even try this. Let's uh, squeeze that in just a bit. I'm going to crop off this part up at the top too. Okay. And then the free transform tool just scale that back out. And let's see. By the way, you can also move around the, uh, the vector points making up this shape. So you can see that if I roll over to the very edge of this, instead of a curvy line, I get a uh, kind of a, a 
right angle next to the mouse. That means I can pull around one of the vector points. So you can see it's kind of obvious if you just start playing around with it. If you just click, drag down, oh, look at that. I can mess around with that actual point. But uh, there we go. Something like that. And now we're going to add a gradient to it so just go ahead and select this guy and then come over here to your fill color we'll just use a radio a linear gradient for right now and let's adjust how that falls onto the shape so we will hit the F key it's a hot key and then just click down on that shape we're going to just uh, rotate this like so let's squeeze it in some grab the arrow select this guy and uh, the black swatch is up here over the top. Let's set this to being white. So just click down on that swatch and then, well, you can go this way too. I was going to do it with that slider. And we're going to make this maybe about 70% alpha. And then on this swatch down here, let's take this all the way down to zero. And that should kind of look like a reflective ball, I think. Uh, let's hit the F key and just see if we can uh, adjust some of the placement, maybe make it a little bit better. And of course we do, could do the same thing over here with the swatches as well. I guess it is your call. Okay, I like that. I'm going to move it up just slightly and then maybe scale it down just a little bit as well. All right. Uh, go ahead and select it, convert it to a symbol. We'll just call this uh, ball green. And what you might want to do is now select it again and then go over here to your filters and put a little bit of a blur on it. I'm going to take the uh, blurring off the Y though because I like this kind of hard line up at the top, but I do want it to be blurred a bit on the X axis like that. Just slightly. There we go. Okay. Now, let's do this. I, I still think I got a little bit too much uh, blue uh, reflecting from the bottom here, so I'm just going to unlock this layer, double click inside, select this guy again, go back over here to this swatch, and then just take that down a little bit more. Okay, yeah, that's looking good. Now, let's uh, select everything here except for the, uh, the background blue, so I'm just going to kind of click drag down like that select all my guys, convert them to a symbol, so we'll just call this uh, entire ball, okay, and now let's uh, copy this, so I'm just going to go over here to copy, paste in place, one of my favorite hotkeys, but I won't use it yet, and you might have noticed that the shadow kind of doubled up, that's because I got two shapes just right on top of each other, so I'm just moving this guy over with the directional arrows on the keyboard. By the way, if you hold down shift and uh, then move your directional arrows, uh, they kind of move a bit further than if you just clicked them without the shift key. And we're going to take this ball and put it in back of the other one. So we're going to move this guy up, uh, put him up this way, and then go to arrange, send it back, and there's a uh, little perspective problem here because if this guy was back there he would be a bit smaller and I'm going to introduce uh, the scale and rotate uh, option here I use this all the time I got a nice little hotkey set up for it I would uh, suggest you guys do the same thing at some point set up a hotkey for that I just like typing in numerically um, scale values like that and especially if I don't get it right the first time then I can just hit my hotkey for that and scale 90 percent. Uh, if you want to set up a hotkey, you can of course go over here to keyboard shortcuts. Uh, mine is the uh, option key and the R key. All right. Now, we got it at a good size. Let's go and go over here to filters and we're going to blur the whole thing. I think right away you can see a big difference um, just in the kind of presence of this entire scene with this one object blurred um, behind this one right here. Okay, It's just some little trick of your eye that it just the whole thing becomes a little bit more believable. Let me do this. Let me unlock the background layer here and just kind of give the 
whole stage with a bit more presence. We'll lock that back up again. And uh, let's do this. Let's play around with just taking this object off and then just looking at that scene again. Okay, so just kind of absorb it for a second and then I'm just going to hit the undo key, put that ball back on there. And there's definitely something that your eye does when it's got this little guy back here. Where we go, oh, this pops out more. So it's uh, just going to be one of the key things for creating uh, depth throughout um, this lesson, I think. And uh, you know what? We're probably done messing around with these guys, so let's do this. Uh, let's just select the background, this ball, this ball. And uh, to do that, just uh, hold down the shift, shift key and then just click down on those objects. And we will convert all these to a symbol now. So we'll just call this, uh, how about uh, ball scene. And if we uh, need to refer back to that after deleting it off the stage, we can, of course, always go over here to our library and then just drop it back down on there. So now I think the real rat lesson is ready to start. I think it's uh, going to serve us best in this lesson if we uh, use some starter shapes for the, uh, the vector art that we're going to be uh, shading in. So uh, unlike most lessons where we'll grab a shape and, and uh, just for example, throw it down here on stage and then use the uh, pointer arrow to just kind of reshape it and uh, maybe add vector points to it and whatnot, uh, we will just be grabbing some stuff out of the library. But uh, we will do a little bit of this uh, later on, so don't feel like you're going to be missing out on much. And I've already gone over a lot of the uh, just the basics of you know manipulating shapes and whatnot um, in that first part. Uh, one thing I really didn't uh, mention much about though was uh, adding new vector points to a shape. Okay, so uh, let's do this with a square. It's a little easier to see. And for some reason, I lost the timeline. Where'd that go? There we go. All right. So if I just had a square down here, it is. Uh, it's got four vector points. You don't really see them, but they are there. Move them around, whatnot. And if I wanted to add a fifth one on here, what I'd do is uh, holding down the control key on the PC or the option key on the Mac, you would just pull out like so. Okay. So hold down that key and then just drag out and. Uh, pulling them out. My keyboard's been messing up a little bit. I'm sure you guys have noticed I just made a few curves first. For some reason, the whole left side of my keyboard is just falling apart. So sometimes it'll register that I'm holding down a key, sometimes it won't. So there we go. And that did it again. The odd thing is, I have two keyboards and they're both doing it. So I don't know what's happening. So anyway, that's how you would just pull out more vector points. And a lot of times when I'll delete things, you'll just see me just grab a big chunk of it and do something like that. And if you have the uh, snap tool selected, or snap, I should just say the snap option, you can uh, just kind of grab one vector point and then just snap it up against another one. And uh, in this way, you end up kind of minimizing a shape as well. And we'll end up building some shapes. But uh, let's go over here to the library and let's pull out those... Uh, starter shapes. So I've got them all uh, symbolized in the different chunks and then if you just pull out this one here you can see that we've got kind of the basis for a car and you get a good idea of the, uh, the perspective. Obviously the wheels will be here and these are just kind of the wheel base and uh, now let's begin filling this guy in. So do this. Go over here to... Uh, I was actually going to say go to break apart but um, I want to do something first. Double click inside of this symbol and uh, just like the, how we created that ball scene, it's got uh, lots of other symbols already inside of here. Do this. Select everybody. So uh, easiest way to do that would probably just be to go to Select All and right click and you'll get this option. Distribute to Layers. Okay. And let's see. There we go. And now we'll go over here to Break Apart and uh, just takes those symbols, uh, breaks them back down to just their original vector art. And this will be a little bit easier for us because now we can take the paint bucket, drop in uh, gradient, and then just kind of like line them up, uh, you know, certain uh, shades of color against uh, other parts of the, uh, 
the scene here, but uh, we don't have any real threat of uh, these uh, pieces of vector art merging together because they're all on uh, separate layers, and it just gives us a little bit uh, more control. And oftentimes, if you're drawing something, uh, you make one little chunk, and then you'll just create another layer, draw on top, etc. So, uh, same thing we did with the the uh, gleam in the last lesson. Now. Uh, we are still inside of this uh, starter shapes symbol, so one thing I want to do is I'm just going to grab all these layers that we uh, already have. Okay, so I'm going to go to Copy Frames, and then I'm going to get back up here to Scene 1, just delete this off, and then let's just paste those frames already onto the main timeline. So, paste frames, and they might show up someplace else, that's okay, just select them and uh, move them over this way and then we'll delete out these uh, other layers that uh, were there for before. Okay, now, now the hard part. We've got to kind of imagine how light is going to uh, hit each one of these little units of the car and uh, we've, got, we've also got to make them kind of seamless uh, in terms of uh, just being one, you know, framework for this, uh, this base. And, uh, you know, I guess uh, talking about it isn't as good as just doing it. So let's grab the paint bucket and we'll begin a little trial and error. Let's grab the, uh, just this uh, plain white to black gradient and we'll fill this into this uh, first part here. And you might notice that uh, it, occasionally it'll fill in uh, with, uh, you just see this like, you know, dark gray to gray over here. And really it should just be white to black. The uh, reason it does that is occasionally it decides to make this gradient cone that's just larger than your entire screen. If it does that, go over here to lock fill, just uh, deselect it or select it as the case may be. Try it again and then you should see uh, it makes a little bit more sense. White, the black, uh, just taking up only the shape itself. And let's get back over here to our gradient transform tool. And I think what we'll do is expand this out. All right, let's actually we'll squeeze it in some. Let's uh, rotate it, which is that circle there, and then let's start pulling this out. And let me pan back a little bit. Let's see. Of course, you don't have to make this exactly how I'm doing it, but uh, get it kind of close. So I've got the uh, this part of the uh, the cone just coming up right almost to the roof, maybe a little bit smaller in there. And uh, let's see, the center part is about right over there. I I think that'll work. It's something to build off of. And now let's take that uh, same gradient and then just drop it onto this other wheelbase and you know, that's not bad make it just a little bit bigger So it gets kind of dark right in that little corner. Okay, deselect that. Still with the same color in the paint bucket, uh, drop it into uh, this kind of middle shape, I guess where the, uh, the driver and passenger seats. And let's see, uh, let's take a look at how the gradient is falling on that. That looks to be about right. I'm going to make these other layers on top just invisible so we can take a look here. All right, so the, uh, the, the center point where it's most white is right there, and then it gets dark over that way. That works for me. Uh, let's see, and then let's uh, actually we'll keep these invisible so we can work on this shape over here. Grab the paint bucket once again, just fill it in, and let's make this one. A little bit 
bit darker so that uh, just under here and actually let's take a look at what these vis layers visible oh you know what I was clicking on the wrong shape we'll leave that one as it is I meant to actually be working with this one it's kind of the hood of the car so it's center white point is right there and then it does get a little darker underneath I'm going to change the background color to just being a dark gray it might be a little easier to see that way and yeah okay and then back over to this back wheel base let's make this a little smaller rotated a bit just kind of have the same way we did with this one right here uh, so we get kind of dark underneath and maybe stretch it out just a little bit more. And this isn't really an exact science. So. Okay, and you know, this, um, this shape you can see through, of course, in uh, this wheel well here. But that's okay because there's going to be a big tire there anyway. But it is okay that we can see just a little light coming through on that uh, one side and uh, I think this is probably kind of the part of which uh, if I were uh, working on my own and uh, I hadn't kind of seen a clear uh, uh, well foreseeable uh, good future for this uh, car I would get kind of frust frustrated because uh, it doesn't look like these shapes are really kind of meshing together too well and um, I don't know. I, I have a tendency to kind of crumple up uh, the piece of paper uh, a little bit sooner than I should. But uh, obviously, I'm kind of working off of uh, you know a previous attempt that I have done that ended up being successful. So I you know I can kind of see that all right, this is how things looked before, and uh, now is the point where we'll kind of really shade these things together and um, smooth them out a bit. But I think it's okay to look at this and go, oh, is this going to turn out okay? You know, so. Uh, just to give you a little frame of mind. <laughs> All right, now let's do this. Let's go back and make them into uh, symbols once again. So what we'll do is uh, select this front shape uh, and just call it uh, front uh, wheel base. Oh, my technical terms for cars are a little off. Uh, You know, I was noticing, I think that I want this to be a little bit uh, lighter on this one side. Let me fix that real quick. Just take that center point. Yeah, I think that's about right. Okay. And let's see. Main part. One other thing, I'm surprised I didn't catch this before. I'm just going to kind of move this little bit of the circle up some. There we go, because you're kind of seeing it underneath there. Okay, now that these are uh, all symbols, what we can do is uh, put all sorts of uh, you know filters on them. And uh, I think a good starter one would probably be uh, over here in the back wheel base. And this is an easy one, too, because it's just uh, a drop shadow. Okay, uh, we're going to set this to an inner shadow. All right, you can see uh, exactly what it did there. Just apply that shadowing to the inside part of the shape, not uh, underneath it. Okay, and then we're going to change the color to just being, let's see, I think this is getting cut off a little bit. It's just this one right here, this uh, pound 99999. And uh, right away, it kind of just appears like there's now uh, a little bit of a highlight coming from maybe a light source over this way, just hitting the back of that. And in terms of blurring or all these other adjustments here, we're not going to worry about those for right now uh, because I think this actually applied on, got applied on here really well. So we'll leave that as is. And uh, now let's try to blend this shape a little bit more into the main part of the car. So here's where we get kind of tricky. I want you to do this. Copy it. Okay. I'm not going to see anything happen now, but go ahead and insert in a new layer all right so it's just going to create another one right on top of there and then paste it in place okay and obviously you're not going to see anything either because you just pasted a shape identical to itself right on top of another one now if i were to move that around you'd see oh okay there's two of those guys here now do this duplicate the shape now 
kind of seems like we just did that exact same thing, but this is uh, very different because there's going to be back wheelbase 2 now. It's going to be a unique symbol in the library. Okay, you can see that it is has been added in there. And I can uh, delete from that shape. I can double click inside of here and just chop out maybe, you know, let's say, that much of it. And it's not going to have any effect on this shape back over here. Okay. And in fact, you know what, I think that is exactly what we're going to do. But uh, let's uh, kill this drop shadow that's already on it because remember when we did duplicate that shape, it uh, duplicated the filters on there as well. And we are now going to go over here to properties and actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back to filters, but uh, just blur it. And primarily this blur is going to occur on the X axis. Okay. And... What I want to do, because you can see that blurring just kind of overlaps on this side. Let's uh, double click into this shape, and we're just going to take a line like this and just draw it right across there. Okay, so uh, I can now select that entire side of that shape uh, independent of this one. And in doing so, I'm just going to select it and then delete it off. I'll now delete off this line. Okay. And then I'm just going to curve this back down a little bit. It's probably not going to matter at all. But uh, I don't know. It just feels like a smoother shape. And then I think what I'll do is just bring this out just a little bit more. Okay. So you can see now what's happened. And actually, let's take a look at without that shape. So we had a clear line there before. Uh, with it on there, we don't really have that same line. Okay, so... And smoothing into that other one. Uh, save the file if you haven't done that anytime recently. And let's go ahead and do that same uh, dirty little trick for this uh, front wheelbase. So I'm just going to go and uh, again copy this shape. I will just paste it in place right on top of itself. And without letting go, go over here to symbol, duplicate symbol, and we'll call this uh, front wheelbase 2. And for this one, let's double click on inside, and we're just going to chop off oh, about that much of it. And in fact, you know what? I don't think we need to see this part either. Okay. And we'll just kind of round that out though. Go over here to filters, blur it again, and again, it's more important on the x axis than on the y-axis, so we'll bring that up some. And uh, once more, I'm going to double click inside and then just kind of pull this out this way. And uh, you might ask, well, why not just, up here on scene one, why not just move this over this way? And it's because if I did that, it would adjust where this gradient is lining up with the one right below it, okay? And you can see after a while, that starts to make um, sense why you wouldn't do that. Maybe it's more apparent down that way, okay? But uh, again, we have that, that gradient that's just staying in place, okay? And uh, again, it seems like a nice little, you know, smoothing between these three shapes now. Okay, so uh, let's keep the ball rolling and let's put a highlight on this front part of the wheelbase. And we're going to get a little bit trickier here now because I'm going to copy this shape again. Uh, I'll just go ahead and create another layer up this way. Although, you know, it really um, try to avoid matching exactly my layering. Um, what, you just want to basically remember what's on top of what, but uh, people tend to get bogged down just kind of staring at this area. Just know that, you know, if I'm working above something, then that I've got to be above that that object on in the layers over here but um, it's not a big deal and from time to time I'll just kind of in a sense collapse them all by taking everything and then just cutting them off and pasting them all into one layer so anyway just keep in mind right now I'm on the topmost layer pasted that shot that shape right on top of here and what I'm gonna do now is actually break it apart and then just make it all white okay so that's easy to follow and again I'm just gonna take a line and just cut right across probably do about here okay so I can select this shape and I can select this one back here I don't need my line anymore and actually you know what I don't need that line but I do need another line I'm just going to kind of cut this one across like so 
and get something like this. I'm just going to bend this out, put that down there, and I do have the uh, snap option selected. So when I grab this uh, point right here, I'm just going to snap that guy right over to there. Uh, this one we could add a point on, maybe coming down this way a little bit and then just closing that in some. Probably won't matter because ultimately we're going to have a headlight there anyway, but um, if you just want it to look nice for right now, go ahead and do that. And let's see, I think we are ready to blur this. So go ahead and uh, convert it to a symbol. We'll call this uh, front wheel base um, highlight, I guess. And go over here to filters. I'm going to blur it. And if we blur it quite a bit on the uh, X and the Y, I think this is going to do the trick for us. Yeah, something like that. Let me get it into position. I'm going to actually move it up just a little bit. And I think this is good too, where you can kind of see just a little bit of gray kind of peeking out on this outer side here. Uh, of course, now the you know big question here is, <laughs> what do we do about all this uh, kind of white matter on the edge here? And to deal with that, the best thing we can do is convert this to a symbol again. Okay, so we'll call this, uh, I don't know, wheel highlight. Then. Uh, Double click inside of here, uh, create a new layer. All right, so just a layer two on top of this. And we'll just grab a circle, make it uh, blue so it's kind of obvious. And just draw it over top here. And we'll use this as a mask for this highlight shape. And bring that up that way. Let's, uh, I'm going to view this as a wireframe, okay? So that purple line now is just what that blue shape was. I'm just going to line this up with that, um, kind of the arc, that wheelbase. Probably would have been a little easier actually to just go ahead and copy that shape below it and then uh, paste it in here as a mask, but that's okay. All right, now, uh, once you've done that, once you've got roughly lined up in there, just go and uh, right click on that top layer, go to mask, and magically, it will now only be showing us, you can see, the, uh, the blurred part on this one side. And let's see if we select it. Let's move it over just a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. And to uh, have a little bit more fun, let's uh, double click inside of here and uh, deselect the mask layer. Okay, let's zoom in a bit create one more layer up top this way. Actually, let's view this as wireframe one more time. I'm going to grab a line, and on this empty layer, I'm just going to draw this line down to about here. I'm just going to arc it. Okay, so I get something like that. And let's make this line thickness about 1.5. Gonna go over here to shape and uh, convert lines to fills. Okay, and if you uh, aren't familiar with that, uh, well, let go of it and uh, then play around with the uh, shape. Just kind of roll over it and move part of it. You can see that it's now a fill shape, not a line shape. Those lines, uh, if you grab any part, they'll still kind of retain their um, a linear nature, but uh, it's just back to fill artwork, kind of, you know, same thing you would create with uh, that zone. And uh, now let's uh, copy this, or actually I should say cut it off of this layer, and then paste it onto our mask layer. So I'm just gonna paste it in place let go of it, and then select it, and then delete it. The backspace button, you'll see it's just taken out now from that mask layer, just a line in that same shape. If we lock it up, 
we end up getting a nice line through there. And uh, when we come back over here to our main scene, uh, what this will end up looking like ultimately is just some sort of, uh, I don't know, just a little tiny detail in here. And in fact, you know what, I think I might double click inside of this shape, go back over here to the mask again, and make that line just a little bit thinner. And to do that now, it's not that hard, we'll just go over here to Expand Fill, and we'll set the distance to about maybe not even one pixel, maybe 0.3. Oops, you know what, I'm sorry. Uh, do that again, but uh, instead of an uh, expansion, it's actually an inset. Oh, no, I'm sorry, this, this was set to inset before, so it is truly going to be an expansion. So it'll expand all around this shape, but including the inside part of that line. And there we go, so it makes it a bit thinner. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So We'll do many more of these little lines throughout here. Okay, so save up the file, and what to deal with next? Well, let's put a little bit of a uh, kind of a darkening up along here. And uh, like I said before, from time to time, let's just grab everything, put them onto one layer. I think this is a good time now. So just grab all these shapes, cut them off, choose any old layer you want. How about uh, this layer 10? We'll call this, uh, I don't know, shapes. And we'll delete out these other ones. OK. I think we can probably get away with copying this shape and then just pasting it over this way. We'll make it a bit smaller, though. And actually, let's uh, squish it just a little bit. This worked for me the first time around. It might not the second. Do this though. Uh, duplicate it. So I'll just go over here to uh, symbol, duplicate symbol. That way we can mess around with this without messing up our other one. Double click inside of here. Uh, zoom in. By the way, if, uh, if you don't know how to do that, just the zoom tool and then you just kind of select an area. And let's do this. Let's just make it so that uh, we can start from scratch with this mask. So just Lead off a whole chunk of that and then just kind of take this line over this way, line it up to that edge, curve out this shape. That's probably good enough. Go back over here to scene one. Move it over just a bit. Okay. Uh, one thing though, we'll double click back inside. Let's uh, lock that up. And then I'm going to just make the mask a wireframe, unlock the layer with the actual blurred shape. And then let's go over here to filters. And we'll just take the blurring down just a little bit. There we go mostly on the x-axis. I think the y-axis is still fine for that. Okay, and let's take this shape right here. Okay, so we're just going to copy this guy. We'll uh, paste him on a new layer on top of everybody else. We will duplicate this. So symbol, duplicate symbol, call it hood part. Let's call this hood blur. And double click inside of here just to lead off Probably that much of it. And in fact, you could probably delete off even more. And I'm going to move this over just slightly, curve this out. Really, I just want to be making a blur that's going to just overlap with this part of it. So, with that selected, go over here and go to your filters, blur, and let's set these up just a bit more. Okay. Double click inside of here, let's zoom in some, and just kind of move this shape up a bit. I'm going to chop off a little bit of it on this end, though. 
as we were starting to see a little bit of that blur kind of extending out. And there we go. That's that's probably exactly what we need. So take a look at it without that. Okay, so it's just kind of smoothed on in there. And uh, let's do this. I'm going to take that down to about 12. At a point, the further out you blur something, it just ends up uh, kind of evaporating almost. So, okay. All right, these shapes are coming together. Uh, let's do this. So let's grab just another plain white shape. So I'm going to set the uh, the fill color to white. I don't need a stroke for it. I'll just go ahead and create another layer up this way. And we're just going to put a little bit of a highlight around this back wheelbase. So not being too exact, just creating out a shape like this, curving it, almost just like a little boomerang. And once you got it, let's just call this highlight one over here to filters and blur it out. Good. If you want to play around with your quality at all, um, you'll see a few things happen. Watch uh, when I switch this to medium, it almost kind of spreads it out a bit more. And um, sometimes you can just use that to be a little bit more exact with uh, how it lays on top of there. Uh, I think for an illustration only project like this, um, setting your quality uh, to medium or high uh, is usually going to you know, be just as good as uh, anything else. But uh, uh, sometimes if you're going to animate something with all those blurs set at the highest level, it can uh, kind of uh, slow down the processor just a little bit. Okay, so move that back down there. I think that's looking pretty good. I might actually go over to your properties and then just take the alpha down slightly uh, to maybe about 75% of what it was. Okay. Feeling like this uh, one side is looking abnormally dark, but uh, let's go ahead and add the windows in here, and they're, um, they're mostly darker anyway, so it'll kind of add a little bit ba of balance over here, and it won't kind of be throwing me off so much. So uh, in the library, I've added in here a window one and a window two. And again, just so you guys don't have to further stress yourselves with getting exactly the right vector art. Just kind of drop those on there. Uh, we do need to arrange them though. And what we'll do is actually this should be uh, just on the layer with everything else. So cut that off. Uh, just paste it down here. Once you've selected something, it should just add it to that same layer. And we need to send this backward a few times. So just behind uh, this highlight and then this uh, front shape down this way. Let's get this right over about there that works and then for this guy just move him up this way okay and uh, let's colorize these a little bit better so double click inside of uh, this symbol and let's grab the paint bucket over here just make this a linear gradient fill that in and then we'll worry about adjusting it over here in the color mixer uh, select it let's just make this a nice dark gray grab the uh, gradient transform tool and we'll make this a little bit lighter up here at the top so darker down at the bottom let's see how that looks now let's try making it a little lighter, so double click uh, in here and then uh, let's grab the swatch right below this one. So just Okay, that'll lighten it up and let's add a couple filters onto this. So uh, with it selected, go and uh, add a drop shadow and this first one we'll set to being white. Uh, make it an inner shadow. Set the distance to two, the blurring to two on uh, the X and the Y axis. And then uh, let's take the angle, this will be kind of the important part, and then just kind of uh, turn it around. Let's go to about 230. 
So we get this kind of just little white uh, just lip underneath the window there. Okay, and then we'll do another one. So create a separate drop shadow. Again, make this one to inner shadow, and uh, that placement is actually probably perfect. See how it just kind of now adds this uh, nice little drop shadow underneath. Well, it seems like it's kind of kind of coming underneath from the uh, from above. And uh, let's add a little bit more dimension to this window. I'm going to create a layer up this way, and I'm just going to grab a square tool. Uh, let's uh, make it a black color. We'll set the alpha down to be about, well, for now, 40% should work. Just draw this over top. And I'm just going to bring up this point here, curve this, curve this like so, bring this point over this way some, maybe just bend it a bit down there, and then select it, convert it to a symbol, a window. And then let's uh, go over here to filters, blur it, and let's go a little bit further on both the X and the Y. And uh, something I'll do kind of often is if I do a highlight like this or a, some sort of inner shadow, I might just copy it and then just paste another one out this way and then just see what happens if I double them up like that. Like, do I like it more? Do I like it less? Or maybe even uh, bringing one down somewhat so that it almost kind of comes out of the shape itself and seeing how that looks. Or, you know, just doing the opposite, throwing it up here. Um, I think in this case, let's see. I'm gonna put this one up just a little bit more and then just paste that other one down somewhat. And I do like how that looks. Uh, one other thing to try, let's uh, grab a circle and just kind of do the opposite of this. And then, uh, so it's just a whiter shape and take the alpha down to about maybe 30%. Uh, we'll just draw it out here for now. Might even clip off a bit of the bottom. Uh, let's see, let's call this highlight window. And for a car, this could uh, maybe not even be a highlight, but uh, it could be seeing something through the window itself. But uh, we're going to blur it out so much, nobody will really ever know what it is. So it's really nothing more than that. It, it, it just could be this kind of... Uh, highlighting effect based on this uh, this darkening here and then it goes back to being a little bit lighter again just to sh kind of show the window bubbling out a bit but uh, let's not mess with that window anymore let's go over to here to our other one uh, let's try this uh, with that main uh, window shape selected go and copy the filters so if you just hold down on this and go to copy all we'll now select this other window and then we can just go to paste filters and that should work. Uh, well, oh, you know what? We need to put in a, a, a linear gradient here. So we'll do the same one before where we take this white swatch and just make it uh, over there at that uh, 666 hex value. And let's see, let's make uh, well, the light would be hitting this a little bit differently. It wouldn't just be the same. Um, way it was hitting that other window. So we'll just try making the gray part over that way some. Something like that. And yeah, I think this works okay. I'm going to make it a little bit darker though. And just by doing that, just, just take this part and move it over. Yeah. So most of that window is just uh, pure black. Let's see how things are looking. Uh, next up, I'm noticing that this line right here is almost a little bit too hard. Let's try to uh, soften that out a bit, and uh, that should be an easy one. I'll just create a new layer up above everything else. If I can click that button, there we go. And let's grab a black. Uh, we'll set the alpha down to just 30%. And just starting right about here, 
just kind of stretch out one point that way, uh, one point maybe here, and then another one down there. So it's almost like this super stretched out uh, triangle. In fact, I'll put that point down there and just kind of curve this just a little bit. Okay, and convert it to a symbol. Two, who knows? Filters, and we'll just blur this guy out. Try to move this down just slightly. I think uh, it's a, even a little bit too dark. Let's try to take the alpha down some. I just need to curve this a little bit. Uh, again, one good test. Just see if it works without it, or you know which one works better. I, uh, sorry, it's almost hard to tell. I will let it stay in there for now. Maybe it, in some ways it adds a, just a little bit more of a definition to this part that's uh, bulging out. Okay, now we're jumping around a little bit, but let's uh, add a line. Just kind of, uh, I guess, uh, where the door would, uh, you know, kind of fold into the rest of the car. So we'll just put that line right across here. Actually, we'll start it down at the very bottom. And you know, we are kind of adding up a lot of layers, so let's just go ahead and collapse them all again. Just grab everything, cut it all off, and paste it all back in place again. And let's go about adding that line. So, again, starting right there, we'll just draw it out to about this point, and then curve it. And uh, what's kind of fun about drawing these uh, gray colored lines on top of a, uh, a black and white uh, drawing like this is you really see the difference between you know the same color here as opposed to down here it suddenly becomes way lighter but we, you know we've made no color change to that uh, line at all obviously and yeah get a shape like this and let's go ahead and just create another line we'll start it right about let's say here Curve that up. Maybe move it over just a tad bit so it doesn't merge right into that window. Now let's zoom in just a little bit. A third line, this one will just uh, snap to there, and this one to, oops, that one to there, and then we'll just curve it out. Okay, last little line for this part. Just coming across from, I guess, an imaginary point there, and then just connecting up to this other line. I think it's connected. It's kind of hard to see. Um, let's see. Yeah, when you view it as a wireframe, you can just see uh, exactly where it resides. And then select the whole thing. We're going to call this uh, convert to symbol. Uh, we'll just say definition line. How about that? Then a nice little cheap trick with this is to add a filter on. Uh, it'll be a drop shadow, this time white. And then for the distance, just one, and then one, and one. And uh, if it's not uh, easy to tell, there is just kind of this doubling now of the line through here. And uh, I think that adds a lot to it. One little thing that's bothering me though is I'm just gonna double click into the original line and then see how mine just kind of ends up you know nowhere over here i'm going to add on one more point this way i can't really see it but uh, it is there and then i can move this little part of the line independently from the main unit and then just curve that out and when i get back over here it should end up looking a little bit better 
And by the way, sometimes what I'll do, uh, if I do have a line that uh, I, I guess I agree with, I like how it looks, I'll uh, double click inside of here and then, uh, let's take that wireframe off, and then just go over here to convert lines to fills. And then you can play around with maybe making it slightly smaller. Uh, let's see, let's go to expand fill, and then we'll just inset it by like maybe 0.2. See how that looks. I can also toy with making the original line just a bit darker. Let's see. Hey, I like that a little bit more down here, but you know, we could have the best of uh, both worlds. We could just select this shape. There's nobody, nothing that says that we can't uh, just grab this part of it only and then set that back to being a little bit lighter. Let's see. Kind of works. Well, it's just me being a perfectionist, I think. Let's try to move on. Move past that, I mean. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and block in the wheels, even if we don't add uh, so much detail uh, to them just yet. And, uh, you know, with that in mind, we should probably uh, set up some sort of uh, ground plane uh, down this way as well. And uh, I do have that uh, ready for us to go in the library. Let's go down. Where is this called again? Oh, check it for. There it is. So uh, just drag this out and cut it off of here. Let's uh, put it onto a layer underneath everything else in case you didn't notice what I just did. You can just drag any layer above or below another one. And I'll just paste that down this way. Just line this part up over to the side. Actually, let's see. Yeah, that's about right. We can take this whole car down, probably. Let's see. Okay, so if you're uh, kind of figuring out where exactly this should go, I just put the bottom part of the check checkerboard just at the bottom depth of the screen and then uh, this part of the car you can look at how much gap there is between the back of the floor and back that way let's set the background to being black there we go and for the wheels for now just circles I'll uh, view these as wireframe for right now. Okay, let's just call this guy Tire One. We'll copy this, paste it back here, and of course we need to make this a bit smaller. And let's put on the same layer as um, all this stuff. So it's just, uh, for me, just that layer. I'm just going to then move it, or arrange it, I should say, behind the other shapes. Let's squish this one just a little bit. And uh, for these back tires, uh, just going to view them as silhouettes, so I'm just going to uh, duplicate this uh, tire, just call it Tire 2, and uh, it's probably just going to stay full black, so I'll just move it behind everything else. And then we'll show just a little bit of this other tire back this way. Okay, uh, let's take one big circle. Uh, we'll set the uh, alpha to about 60%, and we're just going to draw it underneath everything else just to give us a little bit of a, a drop shadow here. And in fact, we'll make it even darker, about 70%. Okay, let's call this a car drop. Filters, you guessed it, blurred out some. All 
All right, and I feel like, let's take a look here. Uh, kind of roughed in everything, but uh, obviously we're uh, missing a lot of the uh, the finer details, any sort of grill or uh, hubcaps, all that good stuff. But um, uh, it's getting there. It's been about an hour and ten minutes, so this is a good breaking point, uh, I think, visually, but uh, just for me talking into a microphone. So uh, I will meet you back here with uh, this exact saved state of, uh, of the file as our start file for uh, part two, and then this will be called uh, finished file for part one. And uh, then we will proceed to make all the uh, details. Okay, be back.